G'day fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the southeast side of the map, playing as the Holy Roman Empire in the color blue, it's Vortex. And on the northwest side of the map, playing in the color yellow as the Chinese, it's Beastie Cutie. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Holy Island. We're here as part of Golden League 2. For anybody unfamiliar with it, well, where what rock have you been sleeping under? It must be very comfy. I'm sure you've got a sleeping bag underneath there. But uh, for anybody, yeah, who has missed it, Golden League, 15 GMT every Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern for all you Americans out there. It's where some of the world's best games are taking place right now. I tell you what, the games from these this event have been absolutely mind-blowing. And I'm curious to see exactly where Beastie goes with this opening. Take a look at this. We've got a single scout opening from him. Obviously, no uh, Imperial official going to be coming out. Wants to try and get that dock up as, as soon as possible and opts for an early village. So very early village here. Not going to be going onto the wood at all. So a bit of an interesting Chinese opening. Uh, when it goes over to Vortex, though, I mean, this is all pretty standard stuff right here. Going off the straggler trees. Looking to try and get that dock down as soon as possible. And of course, begin making fishing boats and look at that puts two in queue immediately vortex is having a good game over here that is for sure uh now let's talk a little bit about this matchup this is probably my most feared matchup playing the chinese against the holy roman empire it's one of those matchups where everything needs to go perfect for china and still you need a mistake from the holy roman empire to win there is just so many opportunities for the holy roman empire to win this matchup i'll tell you what it makes you Make, makes me lose sleep at night. Well, not anymore, because I'm an English man now, so I don't have to lose sleep about that. I lose sleep against the Malians. That's that's a little bit different. Not really, actually. I don't I don't really lose sleep over any Civ matchup here. To be honest, I don't lose sleep uh, over Age of Empires anymore. Uh, it, it's more over my son when he wakes up and he's crying. I gotta go check on him, make sure he's okay. That that's the only thing I'm really losing sleep over at the moment. But uh, let's talk a little bit about this game. We've got a, a nice little straggler opening here as well from Beastie. Now I see two. There's the third straggler there. So now I'm gonna be moving out over onto the. Um, the the lumber camp or the the lumber line, I guess you could you could call it. Nice little position that he's got here with the village on the backside. Remember that this map, Holy Island, obviously not available in the ranked pool. So oh, look at that Willy Wagtail coming all all the way on out. That is the weirdest bug. I don't think I've ever seen that Willy Wagtail bug before this event. I don't know why the why the fishing boats are doing it, but it's uh it's an interesting one. Sheep coming in now for Beastie. 11 sheep. He's got 12, 13, 14. Plenty of sheep. 15 down here as well. So in the event he does lose water, he's got sheep to deal with. And I think that's the big thing, right? Like, obviously you want to avoid losing water. But if it does happen, I think there is a world where you can set yourself up for a potential transition. The problem is you need to survive. And the way that we're going to be looking to survive any kind of water transition is through, like, defense, right? Point defense, keeps, outposts, stone walls. And what does this game mode have? It's got very specific rules that say you can't make stone walls and you can't make keeps. So it makes it one of those things where it's like, if you lose water, there's a really good chance you're going to lose the game. So I think both players are going to be committing as hard as they possibly can to that. Uh, when it comes to Beastie, I'm curious as to whether we're actually going to see a Barbican on the coast. There are some good spots. This one in particular is a really nice spot for a Barbican because it does sit out quite far. You want to try and go for those more protruded little spots on the coast where you can put that barbican down. You don't want to go for like a, a little one back here. That way it gets really decent coverage and can look to cover all of this area here. Uh, so that, that'll give you great use. The alternative, of course, is to throw it on the gold. Another great spot for your barbican. Uh, one thing to note is Beastie might not even opt uh, for an Imperial Academy here. I mean, it, it's nice to have, but I, I don't know whether you need it. That's the whole thing. Um, and he moves more villages out over the wood. This makes me think, is he going for a double dock? He's going for a double dock. Yeah, okay. So uh, as soon as we see those vills move, it's like, th this is definitely... He's looking for a bit more of an extended age. He spots out the second dock from Vortex. That's why he's done it. So he's looking to match what Vortex is throwing down. So Vortex, obviously, just pumping out fishing boats at the moment. Up to eight fishing boats. Compare that out to Beastie, who's on six. And Beastie's probably going to be feeling a little bit under the weather after spotting that one going, oh, gosh, double dock, double dark age dock, double, double dock. Because they've both got two docks. So it's double, double dock. Anyway. A lot of D's right there. Uh, <laughs> these nuts. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have. I, it, it, just, it just comes up sometimes. Uh, but anyway, uh, so let's talk a little bit about why this matchup is so hard for the Chinese. So for anybody... Oh, I'm, I'm not going to even say for anybody who doesn't know. I'm, I'm just going to... I'm going to assume you guys don't know. I'm going to assume you guys are clueless right now. The Holy Roman Empire wants to do the same thing as the Chinese. The thing is that they do it faster than what the Chinese do. So 
the Chinese love to go for like the two town centers. They love to go for Song Dynasty and that's going to make sure that they hit a really high vill limit by about, you know, 18 minutes. They're going to be looking at maximum villager capacity. Look at this. Oh my God, we got Mine Work Palace coming in. Uh, so about 18 minutes. And the thing is with the Holy Roman Empire, they can look for an Imperial Age around the 11 minute mark, 12 minute mark, 13 minute mark. And with a Palace of Swabia, that's going to enable them to catch up to that village account, that lead uh, that the Chinese have got. And at the same time, they're able to use the relics to supplement their income. And it just means that essentially you just get to the late game behind the Holy Roman Empire and they're always just a step ahead of you. So it makes it very tough. But what have we got right here? We got a mine work palace. We got a barracks. We got ourselves a little bit of an interesting game. Barbican does come out on the front. Yeah, so no real surprise there. I, I would be honestly surprised if he went for an Imperial Academy. I think it's likely he'll go for a Song Dynasty at some point in this game, but it, it does lose its value unless you are going for that second TC or even, even the third TC. I remember watching a game. I think it was Louis MT. We saw him go for three TCs and then go for Song Dynasty. Like if you're not going to make Zhukunu, Song Dynasty. I mean, it's nice to have the Granaries. I guess that's the other thing. But uh, anyway, we do have three docks coming out for Beastie. Let's see exactly what he puts in the queue when this age up comes in. Both players are going to be aging up at very similar times. 6.09 for Vortex. Immediately looks to get marching drills. I didn't expect that. And it's going to be men at arms heading out over towards the enemy docks. At the same time, at, at his own docks, he's going to be looking to get a galley and a hulk in queue. So he's going to be running out at full speed here with the men at arms. So putting on pressure on the land and on water, and it's double dock or double uh, Hulk coming out. Is, is it called a Hulk? No, it's called a War Junk. So I guess it's still got its own unique name, even though they're technically the same thing. But uh, Sprinkled Chips. Let's just call them Sprinkled Chips. It's easier that way. Sprinkled Chips. We've got some Sprinkled Chips coming in uh, for both players at this point. Uh, so Scout's going to spot that out. Hulk obviously has the opportunity to snipe out some of those sheep. Not going to be doing it though. And now Beastie going to be on the defensive on or on the defense on two fronts here. I'm curious whether he spots these men at arms. There he is. He, he gets that that spot. Imperial Academy getting thrown down. So he's going to be moving into that Song Dynasty. And look at these walls coming up. Beastie just looking to try and keep himself a little bit safe here. Obviously has to respect the men at arms. So I just, is he going to be looking to wall himself across here? If he does, that is absolutely chef's kiss. The real key thing here for Beastie is that he needs to make sure he stays alive on water. If he loses water, he's going to have a terrible time. But my, my fear is that if how do you deal with the men at arms? See, this is one of those things where it's like we, we go back to Age of Empires for the beta. And it's like, how do you deal with men at arms? And, you know, back then we didn't know. And, and now we kind of know, right? Like you've got to build up horsemen uh, to, to be your front line. And then you've got to use archers with the extra damage that they've got. You can probably supplement Shugunu in instead. But yeah, that, that's essentially how, how you deal with it. The problem is, if you've got an enemy who's kind of doing both things right now, like we don't really know exactly what Vortex is up to. We know he's making men at arms, but we don't know how many. And obviously, Beastie's looking to try and keep tabs. But, you know, at the same time, it's like, mm, but how many are really going down here? Uh, and he's continuing to add boats as well. So there's a really nice double pressure that's coming through here. The first one obviously going to be on land. The second one on water as a potential threat as well. Now, do note that if he plays defensive on water, he keeps that fishing economy going. And at the same time, he's also able to pressure on land. Looks like it's going to be a Zhukunu response here with the archery range getting thrown down. Obviously, the Imperial Academy is already complete, so he's going to be able to move straight into that. I suspect probably going to be looking to supervise uh, this archery range up as quickly as possible. Might even need to st start thinking about villagers repairing up this wall. And there's the first vill coming out. Needs to try and keep this alive. Probably wants to move into plus one ranged attack as well because, well, I mean, r honestly, ranged attack is probably a bad decision when you think about it from Beastie's perspective. It, now, I don't know whether he knows about the mine work. If we take a look from his perspective, he's scouted this area out. So you'd think maybe, uh, but the issue that you're going to have is plus one can come through at any second. It's going to be at a discounted rate. You know that your enemy's already got the landmark for it or the, the blacksmith. So it's just kind of like, well, it's just a wasted upgrade, right? Like, you, you don't want to go to five attack and your enemy goes to four armor. Like, you just rather keep it at four attack. Uh, and then you, that way you don't have to even think about blacksmith. You don't have to think about the upgrades. Chop through. Chop through. This is a big, big attempt right now. Vortex looking to do it. Beastie not going to be able to spot it. We see just a little... You can't even see the... Oh, no. There, there you go. You can see the blue dot. He's moving through on the first one. Is he going to be able to get the second one through? The men are trying to get through. You hear the screams, but it's not going to be it. 
he could look to deny this, but at the same time, he's getting pushed on the water. So Beastie not going to be paying attention at the same time. This could be terrible for Beastie right now. He needs to wake up. This villager needs to go down. That's going to be the second tree. He's got all the tools that he needs to deal with this. Second one comes through, and now the men at arms are able to get through onto the wood line. If, if these vills go down on the wood line, this is the game right here. Beastie trying his best to hold on. We see a couple of, a couple of units. They're going to be looking to try and take it out at the same time on the water. Demo ship coming in. Beastie just 100% hyper-focused on this. Meanwhile, worker kills are starting to stack up. He's up to four worker kills. Not even paying attention. No, he, he thinks he's 100% safe. Another demo ship coming in. Watch out, Beastie. Watch out. From the top rope, he manages to hit one, two of the war junks. Huge damage coming out. And Vortex, I mean, at the end of the day, this wasn't the victory. This was the victory. And Beastie evacuates the dance floor. The cheeky little villager up the side of the map. He never even spotted it out. And now Beastie's got to run for dear life. This is going to pause his economy on water. And keep in mind, in this series at the moment, Vortex is up two games to one. This is match point. If Vortex wins this game, he moves on to the grand final from the or for the for the winners bracket. I mean, I guess technically it's just the grand final. He'll go on to meet his brother there if he is victorious today. Beastie, he's in a real tough spot. He's lost 12 workers at this point. That is a huge amount of damage that's done. At the same time, the Imperial Academy. I mean, he's trying his best to keep all of his structures together around it, but with the walls up, it makes it a little bit harder to keep everything efficient. He can't supervise the archery range, or at least if he does, it's going to be harder for him to do it. But I tell you what, Vortex has done enough damage here. He's just going to be able to capitalize on water. He's slowly but steadily going to be able to overwhelm his enemy. We take a look now at the income per minute and see how that's going. And you can see 700 against 200. It's a huge difference. That's going to translate to a massive difference on the ocean. We see that the explosive Dow's trying to connect. Not going to find too much, I say, as this one looks like a fishing boat. Never... See, see that... that this is this is cheeky this is real cheeky tell the difference between those two come on you, you know what i mean like that hey that's tough to see you could you light one of those bad boys on fire and you're gonna fool an entire fleet demo ship trying its best to hold on at the same time in the base Zhukunu are eventually gonna be able to do it and i tell you what it all just goes back down to that wall you know, I, I think maybe there's a little bit of a... I don't want to say a lack of foresight on Beastie's part, but, like, having the Jukunu over on this position, you, you got to kind of know that a chop through would be a, an, an option. Not guaranteed, but you, you'd expect that a chop through might come through. A good game gets called. Beastie's just going to tap out right there. Vortex is going through to the grand finals. A quick game right there, but a very... I mean, I, I don't want to say a good game. It wasn't a good game. It was a quick game, and, and those two things aren't always the same. Fellas, go check out EGC TV. We're going to bring the grand finals to you, though. They're going to be coming up right after this game. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next one.